What is going on, beautiful folks? Welcome to another episode of Mornings with Lee Hammock, your favorite. You can have a favorite self-aware narcissist. This morning, we're talking about how narcissistic people infiltrate your thoughts and opinions about your own friends and families and other people as well. Not just your friends and family, but other people as well. Before we hop into today's episode, y'all, if you don't know, we're having our next in-person live event in Dallas, Texas on November the 2nd and Houston, Texas on November the 3rd. Dallas and Houston, Texas, we're coming your way. Um, you can get registered for that event at mentalhillness.net slash events. You can enter code mental, M-E-N-T-A-L, 10 for 10% 10 off. It's not an expensive event. Um, but we're just hosting this live event in person or whatnot to help you heal, grow, and thrive after, before doing it after narcissistic abuse, y'all. So get registered for that. Um, but yes, y'all. Yep, yep, yep. Narcissistic people, toxic people infiltrate your thoughts. So I'm right now reading a book. I'm reading a new book. It's called Run Like Hell. Um, it's called Run Like Hell. It is by I can't pronounce her last name correctly, but the Wolf of Wall Street's wife, Nadine, in the movie, she ended up divorcing him and becoming a psychologist. And I'm reading her book right now. I haven't finished it. I'm in the process of currently reading it. Y'all hear me? Hear what I said? I'm in the process of currently reading the book. I haven't finished it yet. Um, but so far, so good. And she was talking about how narcissists infiltrate your thoughts. I, I, that's the chapter I'm on right now. And it infiltrate your thoughts and opinions about other people. This happens. This is how narcissists and toxic people isolate you. Yeah, it's a very, it can be a very, narcissist, I love to isolate you because it benefits them. This is my uh, timer right here, y'all. I time myself when doing stuff like that. Um, narcissists and toxic people infiltrate your thoughts. They, y'all, they love to do it. They really do. And this is how they isolate you. They turn you against your own friends and families and change your opinions about certain things by planting seeds. It's a very subtle way of manipulating you. Like if they don't like your friend, let's just say you have a, let's just say it's me. You know what I mean? It's me and I have a girlfriend or whatever, right? And I'm just getting to know this girl. I like this girl, but her friend doesn't like me. Her BFF doesn't like me. Her BFF can see through my, see can see through the love bombing. And there's, you know, planting seeds in my girlfriend's mind about leaving me. So instead of just saying your friend, you, know, you need to cut your friend off. I don't do that. What I do is plant a little seed. I infiltrate her thoughts and opinions by saying, I think your friend has a crush on me. Like she kind of gave me a little weird look. I don't know. This is like, I don't know. I was just, this is a weird look. It just gave me kind of, I was just looking around the room and I made eye contact with her and I, I darted it away really quick. And then I looked back again and she was still staring at me. I just don't look. I, I'm, maybe I'm reading into things too much. Maybe I'm not. I just wanted, I just thought you should know because that's your friend and, and whatnot. You know, I just might want to keep your eye on your friend. And guess what? That plants they could plant a seed right there, and a lot of people are like, Lee, how the hell is that plant a seed? Because now, even though that might be your BFF of 20, 10, 5, 10, 15, 20 years, now because you love me so much, because I've been love bombing you so much, you got you got your eye on your friend now. And if you catch your friend staring at me for whatever reason, even if your friend is staring at me because she hates me, you now might think that she likes me, and she cares about me. So, guess what happens now? Now it might start to create a wedge between you and your friends. Now you think your friend is attracted to me because now you're starting to notice things that you might not have noticed before. Things that probably don't even mean anything. But I've successfully, successfully convinced you that they mean something. I have successfully infiltrated your thoughts. And eventually now you might now you might actually start working towards cutting your friend off based on me, based on what I said. I, I, your friend hasn't done anything wrong. Your friend doesn't even like me. But I've planted this seed in your mind that makes me think, that makes you think she doesn't like me. She doesn't like me or like us together because she wants me. You see, now I've changed your, I, I might have changed your opinion. So now you don't trust your friend anymore. Now you don't go out with your friend as much anymore. Now you look at your friend differently. You see how subtle that can be right there. And not all narcissists do this, but there are a lot of narcissists that do this right here, y'all. I don't think your mom and dad really like us being together. I don't know, maybe because their marriage is struggling or whatever. They don't like us together. They, they don't, maybe they don't, 
they don't see us working because they're not working. And your parents have been together for 30 years. You're like, wait, what the hell are you talking about? Now you thought that your now you saw that your family doesn't like me. Now I've changed your opinion about your family. Like this is it, it, it happens and it can happen in so many different subtle ways. It doesn't always have to be just friends and family, right? It could be that your your political opinion. Like you could be a Democrat or a Republican or independent, or whatever. And I start planting seeds of doubt within your mind to make you think something differently about your partner, about your friend or whatever. You see what I'm saying? That, about, about your political affiliation or whatever. I can start planting seeds of doubt within you. That like this is how they infiltrate your thoughts. They plant seeds. A lot, a, a lot of covert narcissists do this. Not every single narcissist is covert. Some of them will outright just tell you and demand that you cut people off, right? But the covert narcissists, they don't necessarily work that way. The covert narcissists don't do it like that. The covert narcissists will just plant seeds and allow you, uh, they plant seeds of doubt and allow you to water them. They come into your life Plant this seed of doubt, plant this seed of, of misinformation and allow you to water that seed because now you're, you're you're now you might start getting paranoid about certain things. That paranoia waters that seed. You questioning your reality waters that seed. You now being hawkish about your friends, family, whoever's reactions and actions are planting seeds. You see what I'm saying? You're watering that seed now. And they, you, the more you water a seed, that's planted. Guess what happens? It grows. So what originally wasn't there. Now I've infiltrated your thoughts. Now in this beautiful garden, in the beautiful garden of your mind, now is a seed that now that now is a, a weed that I've planted. You have this beautiful flower. Imagine you have this beautiful flower garden in your mind with bright thoughts and good communication and good relationships. Right. This is a beautiful, luscious garden, like the garden, like the White House garden back in the day. Right. Um, if you're in America or like the garden, I, I ain't gonna say the garden of Eden because, um, that's too biblical, but like a beautiful, luscious garden, Duke gardens in, uh, Durham, North Carolina, something like that, whatever your closest floral garden is. Right. I now, I now come into your life plant this seed and now there's a red weed growing around all of these good thoughts i've infiltrated your thoughts i've changed your opinion on so many different things that guess what happens my thoughts now become your thoughts the way i feel about things become the way that you feel about things it's kind of like being in a cult it really is it's kind of like being in a cult so guess what happens now i'm your cult leader the narcissistic person in your life is your cult leader the whatever whatever figure in your life is your cult leader, right? And guess what happens? If people attack me, you feel like you feel like it's a personal attack. So if people don't like me, and I've convinced you this they don't like that they don't like me for some type of insidious reason, guess what happens? You feel attacked when they attack me. That's the, the, the dynamics of being in the cult. You see it in real life every single day. It's political season in, in uh not North Carolina, but like in the world, right? In, about a political person they feel like it's a personal attack on them because it's a cultish mindset you see what i'm saying it per you can't say anything about a political figure if they feel like it's a personal attack on them like why are you talking about you see what i'm saying this they're infiltrating your thoughts narcissistic people toxic people infiltrate your thoughts because it works yeah it does it, it does work let's be real it works you know what i mean and this is not me just trying to make it make sound like it's bad like it, it is a bad thing if you if they successfully infiltrate your thoughts because they, their thoughts, narcissist thoughts, are almost always going to be of, to their benefit in some way, shape, or form. A narcissist thoughts are always going to be to their benefit in some way, shape, or form. That's just the way it is. I don't make yeah, I don't make the rules. I don't I don't make the rules. I don't enforce them. But this is how they infiltrate your thoughts right here, y'all. This is the the space they fall into right here of infiltration. This is how they replace your. This is how they replace your original thoughts with a thought of theirs and change your opinions, change your friendships, isolate you, make you quit your job because they think your job is bad. They make you change your life up. This is why you get into a relationship with the narcissist. You lose your identity because guess what happens? Remember that beautiful garden, 
with all these green flowers, all these green plants, that red weed is wrapped around all of them. That's why it's so hard to leave a toxic relationship because this beautiful garden, you have to go through the garden and pick out all, you have to go in there and remove all the weeds. You have to go in and remove all the weeds. You have to go dig up the original root of the original weed and pull it out because you've been so influenced and so infected by this narcissistic kind of mind virus that they get to you. They've infiltrated your thoughts. They've changed your opinion on so many different things. They've messed with your head in so many different ways. It can be, it can become damn near unbearable to you. So if you're dealing with a narcissist or a toxic person, this is how they do it. Just think about certain things. Think, think about how you feel about something right now. Think about how your opinion about something has changed You know, since you've been with this person. Think about how you've changed since you've been with this person. You have to dig up the weeds. Don't water the weeds. You ever hear me say that in old videos? Don't water the weeds. This is exactly what I mean. Narcissists plant. They don't plant plants. They plant weeds. They plant the seeds of weeds into your mind. And it starts wrapping around and draining you. You start, you start to think like them. You start to behave like them. You start to act like them. You start to cut your, cut your friends and family members off because they planted this insidious weed in your mind and you start to think like them. That's the way it goes, y'all. Look, again, I don't make the rules. I just enforce, I, I don't even force them. Meanwhile, y'all, thank y'all for tuning into another episode. I really, truly appreciate, appreciate all of y'all. Again, y'all, if y'all in the uh, Texas area, Houston and Dallas, November, Dallas and Houston, November 2nd and November 3rd, Get registered at mentalhealness.net slash events. I will see y'all there live and in person. It's not going to be online. This is a live in-person event, y'all. I appreciate every single one of y'all. Like and subscribe to this channel. Y'all be closing in on 500K. Hopefully, hopefully we can hit 500K for the end of the year. We'll see. We'll see. Thank y'all so much. And as always, y'all, Mental Healness is out. Peace. Thank you so much for making it to the end of my video. I am extremely grateful for you have no idea. If you haven't already, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel. It helps reach more people and click on the screen to watch another video or to browse through another playlist. There's also a link on the screen to check out my courses and my support groups to help you heal and understand what you've been through. Thank you so much again. I will see you in the next video. Peace.